Illinois Senator Tammy Duckworth is joining me now. She is a former U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel. She's a combat veteran of the Iraq War. And I just wonder, what's your reaction to the president threatening to send federal law enforcement to Chicago and other cities like New York, Philadelphia, and Detroit? Well, my answer to him is don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. This is disgusting, and it is the further politicization of um, our institutions, which should be nonpartisan. He did it with the military when he sent National Guard troops against peaceful protesters in Lafayette Square, and now he's done it in Portland, and he's come to Chicago. Don't even think about it. If you want to do something about gun violence, call Mitch McConnell. Let's have a vote on the floor today on, where, on, uniform, on um, universal background checks and on straw purchases of guns. Let's, let's go after gun trafficking. You want to do something? Call Mitch McConnell, have that vote. It would pass. Do not do this. This is wrong. Do you worry, and, yeah. do, do you worry how it would play out, though? I mean, if you have the mayor saying that she's not going to allow this and you have the president with this plan and somehow there's kind of clash, a, a clash, are you worried about how this plays out? Of course I'm worried, but this is what this president does. He has overreached his authority. And, you know, my understanding for what they plan on doing in Chicago is actually sending um, DHS and then also ICE troops, uh, uh, folks, um, to come after uh, uh, so-called uh, human trafficking. Um, uh, and so they're not even coming to work on gun violence. Um, uh, you know, this, they're, they're, and what are they, what are they coming for? I mean, in Portland, they did it to protect Confederate statues. So they sent federal troops in unmarked cars in, in riot gear with unmarked, without any, any designation on it to go protect statues of people who were traitors to this nation. That's what he's standing up for. Don't even think about it in Chicago and certainly not anywhere in this country. It is wrong. And um, I'm going to work very hard to stop him. Look, I, I'm not in any way trying to ask you to get inside the president's head, but I'm sure you must have considered <laughs> what is his objective in all of this. And what do you think his objective is? Is it is it politics? It is politics. He's trying to politicize federal agencies. This is what he's done. Anyone that would stand up to him, he has fired. And so the only people he has uh, in leadership at these federal agencies are lapdogs and, and, and folks who do whatever he wants and who will perverse um, the institutions of our nation. He tried to do with our military, um, and now he's trying to do it with, with the federal forces, um, and we're not going to stand up for it. And, and this is wrong, and I'm going to work very hard, and we're, we're working on legislation right now that would curb this. But if you want to do something, Mr. President, about gun violence, call Mitch McConnell today. Call him today, and let's have a vote on um, gun, common sense gun control legislation that 95% of Americans support, like universal background checks. That would reduce the number of guns in Chicago, and that would reduce the gun violence in the city. I want to ask you about what the president had to say about the military being open to considering changing the names of bases that have been named after Confederate leaders, Fort Bragg among them, Benning, Lee, and Polk, and others. Here's what he said. Military says they're excuse for me. this. Excuse me. I don't care what the military says. I do, I'm, I'm supposed to make the decision. What's your reaction to that? He's made nothing but bad decisions. And as commander in chief of the United States military, it is shameful that he would defend statues on and bases that are honoring dead traitors, people who raise arms against our nation in order to sell, buy, sell, and and harm black Americans. Shameful that the commander in chief would actually support traitors. Um, we have 10 bases. They should be named for heroes of this nation. There are lots of wonderful uh, people of color uh, who have won, who have been recipients of the Medal of Honor that he could name them for. And it's shameful. He's threatening to veto the defense budget, which is what we're working on this week. And so what he wants to do is to deny our troops, are in harm, some of whom are in harm's way right now, a pay raise so that he can protect dead Confederates. I want to ask you, turning now to something else uh, that has happened since we last spoke, about the attacks on you by Fox News host Tucker Carlson. We spoke a lot about them on this show. And he made it a point to go after you uh, when you said it was a discussion. There, there was a discussion to be had when it came to removing monuments. Uh, of American leaders. You were asked specifically about a, a question about George Washington, and you did not agree to the idea of removing uh, a, a monument, but you said there is a national discussion. He called you a moron, but I think what was more significant 
was that he called you a coward. He said that you, among other Democrats, hate America. Uh, he, he questioned your patriotism as a combat veteran who lost your legs in Iraq. Um, and I just wonder what your reaction is, not only to that, but also the fact that we are hearing these kinds of attacks on people who are clearly patriots more and more. And I wonder what you think about that. Well, when you love the Constitution and you love this country as much as I do, so much so that you're willing to lay down your life to protect and defend her, then you must agree to defend the rights of the likes of Tucker Carlson to lie about you. Um, I truly believe in freedom of speech, that it's enshrined in our Constitution. Of course, I don't want statues of George Washington torn down any more than I would want the Purple Heart that he founded ripped from my chest. But I would defend to the right Tucker Carlson to be the obnoxious uh, person that he is and to lie about me, because that's what our country is all about. Um, and, and if you truly love America and you truly love the Constitution, then you have to stand up for uh, uh, the pe people's right to express their opinions, even loathe some ones that are lies that you don't agree with. Um, and I'm to this day, I'm willing if, if they want to call me back up and I'll put my uniform back on, throw my rucksack back on my shoulder and I'll go back to combat to defend his right to be odious. Do you, do you think he's, he's single? <laughs> He did go fishing. It's true. Uh, Fox said it was a previously planned trip. Um, we all leave on a trip on a Tuesday to go fishing. Yes. Okay. So okay, <laughs> you you doubt you doubt. Um, do you think do you think he singled you out because your name has been in the VP mix and he's trying to cut down what is clearly a strength when it comes to your resume. I think he singled me out because I'm Asian American and I look different. Uh, Asian Americans have always been the other in our society, and and don't forget that he, uh, it wasn't just not just my picture. Not I was not the only one that he went after. Um, uh, he likes you know this is going after uh, people that you know he wants he doesn't want America to be as diverse as, as it should be. And in fact, um, it, he used I think ten words of the white supremacy. Uh, uh, um, statement on that. And so, um, you know, this is what they do. They go after your strength, um, but they also single others to try to, uh, folks to try to make them others. And, you know, my family has fought and defended this nation for over 200 years. Um, and I am to this day willing to defend his right to have his opinions. Senator Duckworth, thank you for being on. We appreciate it.